Last week, I ended up completely deleting an entire day's worth of work on a video because I'm an idiot and I wanted to rush. And so this led me down a rabbit hole of trying to find recovery tools to just grab my work back and save the day. And while I was ultimately unsuccessful in doing that, it did make me realize that Linux not only is much better than alternatives that I've used in my entire life, but it's also just a lot more fun. So how did I go from losing all my work and not being able to recover it to I think this OS where I did something stupid is way more fun. Well, that's what I'm gonna talk about today, right after I tell you about a sponsor, of course. This video is sponsored by Proton Pass. You probably already know about Proton Mail and Proton VPN. You likely know that they give you an entire suite of tools with calendars, contacts, online storage space, but they also give you a password manager called Proton Pass. Proton Pass lets you safely store all your passwords in a safe vault, secured with a master password and all encrypted, of course. And it syncs them with all of your devices, whether you use an iOS or Android phone or tablet, Linux, macOS or Windows, any web browser that supports extensions, or whether you prefer web apps, Proton Pass handles it all. It also gives you access to your passwords offline with the desktop apps, and it can store credit cards, notes, account recovery info, your IDs, and more. It even handles two-factor authentication, and it can generate codes for you, so you don't need a third-party authenticator. Personally, I use Proton Pass for everything, personal and professional. I used to rely on Nextcloud passwords, but Proton Pass just has better applications. They just integrate better in the browser or on my phone. Pass is included in your free Proton account, but like me, you can upgrade to a paid plan and you can get more features like dark web monitoring in case one of your passwords has been breached or the ability to attach files to your secure vaults and 10 gigabytes of storage to help with storing these files. As always, click the link in the description to know more about Proton Pass. Okay, so let's begin with my first assertion that Linux is just better than the rest. And I think that objectively, for most people, it is the case. Unless there's one or more programs that simply do not exist on Linux for your needs or the alternatives just don't work, Linux is a better operating system than macOS or Windows for most use cases. It is a faster operating system, it uses fewer resources, it doesn't have built-in ads or pop-ups, it doesn't prompt you to rely on a company's cloud services every minute, it gives you a centralized software repo with a lot of different ways of installing the software you want, something no other operating system has replicated to the same degree. Now, it is likely because Microsoft and Apple both realize that offering 10 ways of installing the same app is completely insane, but also the Mac App Store and the Windows Store, they just don't hold a candle to any distro's repo or to Flathub. They're just not as good. And I know there are like five people who use Chocolatey or Winget, and sure, those aren't bad tools, but they're not here by default, and they just aren't as well stocked and as easy as Flathub, the AUR, the Debian repos, anything. They're just not as good. It's like saying that we do have Adobe Premiere on Linux and it's called Caden Live. It's, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same feature set. It doesn't work the same. It's not as well tested. Well, Winget, Chocolatey, Mac App Store, Windows Store, they just don't work as well as a distro repo because they're an add-on that's been tacked onto the system. Apart from that, Linux is also more open, more customizable. It adapts to you instead of you adapting to it. It takes less time to maintain once you've learned how to use it. It doesn't push forced upgrades to make you buy new hardware. It can actually save older hardware from being obsolete. And Linux desktops just look better. They are more coherent and they are more usable than macOS or Windows. If only because you decide how they work, how you use them, and you pick between various options instead of being forced to use the one that the system comes with and it being a very inflexible experience. So in short, Linux is better for most people than macOS or Windows. Unless you really need something that is not doable on Linux, it is just a better experience. But it's also a lot more fun. Now, the first reason is that you have 
to choose it. And inherently, when you chose to interact with something and to keep using it, it is likely because you like using it, because you are having fun with it. This means that you have the will to go take a look at what Linux is and do your own Linux experiment, basically. And this is obviously way more fun than accomplishing all the same tasks on another operating system that has been decided for you at work or by the manufacturer of your device or by your parents' computer at home. That choice turns things into a potential hobby. And while hobbies can sometimes be frustrating, ultimately we do hobbies for fun. Let's be honest, if being confronted to Linux, discovering new distros, installing new software, trying out new desktop environments, fixing the little issues here and there, if all of that isn't fun for you, then you're probably not that much into computers and software. And that's fine. Some people just want a computer to do something. And so they use what they know and what works relatively well. Even if it's inflexible and not really fun, they're not in here for the fun. But if you like software and computers, the Linux experience offers way more fun than any other system because it is likely to be brand new for you. And another thing that I find way more fun on Linux than on any other operating system is how you discover and try new applications or new command line utilities, whether it's to add a feature or to fix a specific issue on your system. It's that feeling of, oh, wow, I didn't know that tool existed, but it's actually super easy to use and now I'm gonna rely on it every day. That is something you can do on other operating systems. The problem is on other operating systems, when you look online for any tool or any application, what you tend to find is long listicles of alternatives that are only vaguely related to the thing you actually want to do or you find slop articles trying to sell you a tool that definitely does not do most of what you want it to, or a small utility on macOS costing five to $10 to just tile a window somewhere, or even worse, fake links to fake apps that are actually viruses and trojans for Windows. On Linux, you just type what you want into your favorite search engine, you get links to Reddit or a forum with like 10 alternatives that you can use and generally even how you should use them in your own specific case. And then you just head over to your package manager, graphical or not, you install the thing and you run it. There's no sidetrack, there's no slop article, there's no trying to scam you into buying something that you don't really need. It's just a nicer experience. In my own example, when I really stupidly deleted my entire work for the day and remove it from the trash, I really quickly found something about ext and delete and foremost, two tools that supposedly let you recover your files. Now, these tools did not recover my files, but it's because I used them too quickly and incorrectly. And so the problem is that I'm an idiot, not that the tools don't work. But finding the thing was super quick, very gratifying, and just looking at the man pages took like three minutes and I should have taken five to make sure that I used them correctly. Another huge part of the fun of Linux is the learning experience. When you learn Linux, when you learn a desktop, you have to do some amount of research. And that research on Linux is just way more fun than on Windows on macOS, because everything you find is community-based. It's people recommending things in videos, in articles, in just Reddit posts, in forum threads, anything is user recommendations with actual examples of what they needed to do, of how they use the thing. It is not the usual terrible paid for shield articles that will make you buy something that is just not the thing that you need. Or even worse, they're trying to sell you a course to teach you about the thing that could be explained in like five seconds. Learning Linux is much more of a community journey than a let's dive through hours of corporate documentation uh, kind of thing. And that's when what you're trying to do on Windows is even possible because Microsoft just tends to lock things behind a paywall for an edition of Windows that you have not bought. And let's not even talk about Mac OS where looking online, how do I do this? Generally only links you to a small utility that costs five bucks to do something that the system really should have been able to do in the first place. On Linux, you learn through the experience of others without any corporate medium and without really any paid ecosystem around it. It's just more fun and nicer sometimes. 
because it is a community interaction. Sometimes those aren't fun. Now, the other really fun part of using Linux is adapting the system to your needs instead of adapting yourself to how the system works. When you're into computers and software and tech, there is nothing more fun, I think, than to slowly mold your day-to-day -day experience by being confronted with all those small nitpicks and paper cuts and issues and finding ways, keyboard shortcuts, apps, utilities, and desktops to fix those. And as time progresses, your desktop experience becomes your experience that is perfect suited to your needs. That's something you can do on Linux and you really cannot do on any other system. Every component is modular and manageable and so slowly but surely you build your desktop instead of contorting your needs to fit the desktop that a company designed for you. Now I've been running this channel for seven years and I've been using Linux for the best part of 20 years and I still find things that I like to tweak virtually every week. I change a single little setting or a single little shortcut because I realize it just doesn't really work for me anymore. That's something you really cannot do on anything other than a Linux desktop. And it's just fun to be able to improve things even after years or decades. And naysayers will say that you're not improving, that you're fixing problems because Linux desktops are bad and they have issues and they don't want to mess with their setup at all. They want things to just work. And guess what? No operating system just works. You just adapted to a system over time to the point that you don't really notice the problems with it. But if you started fresh with Windows, having never been confronted with it, it is full of issues. Same goes for Mac OS and same goes for Linux. But generally Linux, you chose to be confronted with it and it gives you all the tools and the options to fix the glaring flaws and problems where Windows and Mac OS are a lot more inflexible in how you can change things. Now we also have the distro thing on Linux. There are too many of them. They waste time, they waste developer effort and oh no, it's so bad. We're never gonna win against Windows or Mac OS. But it does give you a lot of things to try and to have fun with. A lot of distributions are just Ubuntu with a wallpaper or a different set of extensions, but a lot of distros are entirely different beasts than anything you've ever used with entirely different tooling. If you like software and you like trying new things, you cannot not like having that many distros. Arch is really different from OpenSUSE, from Debian, from Ubuntu, from Fedora, or from Red Hat. Gentoo is entirely different. Linux from scratch, I don't even know if it qualifies as a distro. Immutable distros are terribly named, but they're a fun concept to play around with. Nitrux is trying to make app images into a thing. It's fun. And sure, you have some distros of Windows, but let's be honest, they just don't compare. First, they're most likely very, very illegal because you're not supposed to redistribute a Windows ISO with modifications. That's why most of them are distributed as a script that you download and run on your system. But it's still Windows. You cannot change the desktop. You can really remove services or parts of the system that you don't like. But it's still the same mishmash of MS-DOS and NT. It's still the same Windows desktop. It just doesn't really change your experience at all compared to the difference between two very different Linux distros. Linux is more fun because it is more diverse. You have choice in desktops, in subsystems, in bootloaders, in init systems, in distros, in whatever else. Diversity breeds fun. When everything is uniform, is the same, and you only have three or four options, you don't have fun, not just because you can't really tweak things to your liking, but also because everyone has the same thing. There is no divergence of opinion, there is no discussion, there is nothing to try. That's what Windows or Mac OS are, that's what Linux isn't. Diversity is always a good thing if you like having fun. And yes, I'm still talking about Linux somewhat. That's the end of my thought process on this. I started things by deleting about six hours of recording and editing work and not being able to recover it sucked. But in the process, I learned about two new tools that I now know how to use properly. So the next time I do something like this, I can fix things. It also allowed me to fix things in my editing process and to change a few settings in KDE that I think will make for a better experience day to day. 
Linux allows me to do that. And so even though the end result was I lost a lot of work because I'm an idiot, I still had fun trying to fix the issue. I was annoyed, but also I was having fun. And I would really not have had that much fun on Windows or Mac OS trying to do the exact same thing. So that's why I think Linux is not just a better operating system for most people. It is also just a more fun experience, at least if you're into computers and software. And if you're into computers, then you like our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux pre-installed. And why that's good is that, well, Linux is better, it's more fun, but also you don't have to figure out if the computer really works well under Linux or not, because everything has been selected specifically because it runs really well with Linux. I only use Tuxedo computers these days. All my channel related stuff, Linux or Warhammer or whatever else, is done on one of their laptops, which is right there, and all my gaming needs are served with one of their desktops, which is plugged in the living room as a SteamOS gaming console. They have a huge range of devices that will fit every price point and every need, so you will find something that is suitable for what you want to do. So if you need a new computer, click the link in the description and check out Tuxedo Computers. They're really, really good. Anyway, this will conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it or listening to it in the background while you were doing something more interesting. You know where all the YouTube buttons are. Click them, as always, to make sure that the channel keeps growing. And I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.